Good day, colleagues. Thank you for gathering here, although the weather is great and it's a perfect day for going to the beach. So, straight to the point. I guess everyone here knows what GNSS spoofing is. But, according to our LinkedIn surveys, 96% of the cybersecurity specialists reckon that it's not their trouble and it could never be related to them. My task today is to convince you of the opposite. So, GNSS resolves two major issues. The first one is positioning or navigation, and the second one is time determination or synchronization. The latter one is the most crucial and rather vulnerable. Why? Well, let's say you are in the center of Moscow and suddenly you appear in the Sher Metro airport. The fact that there are some problems with the navigation is obvious. Or when a sailor or a captain finds out that their ship suddenly jumps from a location in the Black Sea to the port of Gelenjik, the issues with the navigation are obvious too. Also, there are additional sources for obtaining the coordinates. For example, inertial navigation system or one that can navigate by radio frequency signals, for example, the base stations or Wi-Fi access points. The military have their own systems, but at this moment, unfortunately, GNSS has no alternatives for the timing. Of course, here many people can say that we could set the cesium atomic clock that costs $100,000 and voila, problem solved. But the point is that the cesium clock must be periodically adjusted to the GNSS signals in order to have precise PPS. So, where does the synchronization matter? All financial operations and bank transactions must be marked out with the right time, and for that there are specific regulations both in the USA and in Europe. And especially this is crucial for high-frequency trading. 5G demands an extremely high timing accuracy. Otherwise, we can witness degradation of parameters, especially at the boundaries of service areas. And sometimes this accuracy can hardly be achieved even without spoofing or jamming. In fact, digital terrestrial television breaks down without an accurate synchronization. There are even entire regions in Russia that have been taken offline due to spoofing. Nowadays, any automatically distributed control systems requires synchronous measuring, which cannot be fulfilled without accuracy in synchronization. The following data is from the European Space Agency report, and it shows that around 450,000 times servers are sold annually, with 5G and IoT being drivers of growth in the market. By the end of this year, we expect around 3 millions of time servers to be in active use. One can say this figure is not that big, especially if we look at it from the point of the whole planet. However, we shouldn't forget that each time server handles major elements of critical infrastructure. What are the risks? The point is that the navigation satellites, unlike the communication satellites, are at a high altitude orbit in 20,000 kilometers. The transmitter power is only 60 watts. Thus, the power level of the signal that arrives to the surface of the planet is hundreds of times lower than the power level of the ambient noise. Thus, the GNSS receivers are so vulnerable even to the slightest interference. There are two types of intentional interference – spoofing and jamming. Jamming stands for the noise generation which suppresses the reception of satellite signals. In fact, it's not that dangerous for time servers because in case of a signal loss, the time server will be put in a holdover mode and will be able to keep frequency and phase. But if jamming is long enough, let's say one or two days, which is quite a frequent issue for Russia, then you will definitely have a significant degradation of accuracy, which consequently turns into serious problems. Spoofing is a fake signal generation with a structure identical to the real ones, but these signals may carry incorrect coordinates and time. And it's quite risky for the time servers because once the attack is launched, it'll take 15 seconds for the server to shift its local generator and produce the wrong time. So why did spoofing become a mainstream today? It's an old story, in fact, and 20 years ago, we all knew that signals were vulnerable and that there was no authentication. The point is that if 10 years ago the attack execution would cost $100,000, we should have used expensive GNSS simulators. 
Nowadays, thanks to the distribution of the software defined radio, the cost of the attack has dropped to a paltry $200. YouTube is full of instructions. Moreover, there are a lot of open source projects on GitHub, and anyone, even with little technical competence, can launch their spoofer in 15 minutes. The second factor why spoofing is relevant now lies in the following. In some countries, GNSS spoofing has become a de facto standard in anti-drone systems. Within detecting a drone, the coordinates of the nearest airport or nearest no-fly zone are simulated, and the drone either goes to the landing or tries to fly back to the takeoff position. Take a look at this picture from Moscow. It's possible installation points of the spoofers. How can spoofing be done? What kind of scenarios are there? The most popular software on GitHub is called DPS SDR SIM. It allows you to generate only GPS signals and how your time server will act under such an attack. If the power of the spoofer will be considerable enough, your time server will first lose track of original satellites then it'll go into holdover mode, while the embedded GNSS receiver will go into search mode, and literally in 5-10 seconds, it'll find new fake signals to lock up on them, and after some time, the server will recalibrate its local oscillator. The cost of an attack is very low. According to our testing, you can shift the internal clock in 15 seconds after an attack begins. It depends on the firmware in the time server. To get protection from the GPS spoofing is quite a simple task. If you're using a modern time server, you can enable tracking for GLONASS, Beidou, Galileo, and fake GPS will be automatically excluded from the navigation solution due to pseudo range and Doppler error. In case the server gets spoofed, it won't be a problem to process a detection if you have several distributed time servers and you can just compare timestamps between the servers and some of them can be disabled. The second scenario. You can add a GNSS jammer and then, even if the time server works with GLONASS, Galileo and Beidou, these constellations will be suppressed and GPS will get spoofed. The setup will become a little more expensive, and although there will be no option for protection at the time server level, still, you'll have an option of spoofing detection on the system level. By the way, you can visit our YouTube channel to watch one of our videos where we show a spoofer setup, a cell phone, hack RF, and a cheap jammer. And we show how easy it is to hack even a protected receiver and by the way, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and put your thumbs up. We really appreciate it. How can we increase the attack range? You can buy an RF power amplifier with up to 10 watts and a directional antenna. If you get on to some tall building, you can spoof on everything in the radius of around 30 kilometers. Just imagine, the cost of a setup is merely $1,000 and that's it. You can disrupt the navigation in a large region. Detecting such an attack at the system level can be quite challenging, because all the time servers can be covered with a fake signal, and you'll compare fake timestamps. The next variant of an attack is a so-called coherent attack or synchronized attack. When we add GNSS receiver, which collects information about all acting signals and gets synchronized with them, and at the first stage you can generate a signal that'll be identical to the genuine one, same coordinate, same time, pseudo ranges and Doppler. So when the server is attacked, it immediately switches to a fake signal without any error messages without losing the track. And then, at the second stage, you can smoothly shift the time, for example, every minute to 500 nanoseconds. You cannot download the software for this scenario from GitHub. You can either develop it yourself or get commercial solutions that are sold for $5,000.
so the cost of a potential attack gets higher. It's hard to detect such an attack. You'll have to apply spatial signal analysis methods with several space GNSS antennae. Shortly speaking, we can estimate angle of arrival of satellite signal. And as we know the exact satellite position, we can distinguish between genuine and counterfeit signals. Of course, in such case, phased antenna arrays must be applied. It is really expensive equipment, with strong export control. If you want to learn more about coherent and non-coherent spoofing, I advise you to watch this animation on YouTube and take a look at our blog. We have several academic articles, rather curious ones, where we discuss the scenarios and ways to detect them. Now, what's up there in the media space concerning the GNSS spoofing? Since 2015, a number of captains of the ships from the Black Sea started to massively report problems with the navigation. All of a sudden, they jumped from their water zone to Gelenjik Airport. Since each ship has an automatic identification system, and this system actually transmits the coordinates of the vessel via satellite channel with all these coordinates and tracks being written into the database, this way, all gaps in the trajectory of the ship's movement can be analyzed. This operation was done by the guys from a non-profit organization, C4ADS. In 2019, they issued a report upon spoofing in Russia and Syria, and it turned out to be a big report which counted 50 pages. But if we get straight to the core subject, they found almost 10,000 successful spoofing attacks. Another curious incident happened with a Chinese farmer who installed a GNSS jammer to protect himself from the drones that were used by the criminals to drop down the contaminated meat. So the farmer's pigs got sick and he had no other choice but to get rid of this meat selling it for a song. So he bought a jammer, I guess on AliExpress, and it was powerful enough so that the aircraft flying past the farm on a flight level at 10,000 meters actually lost the navigation. Of course, this farmer was quickly found in a couple of days. I guess that was the most amusing case of all I've known before. In 2019, in Shanghai, the vessel automatic identification system showed that ships left the harbor and lined up in a circle to spin around one point of land. It was considered a distraction so that China could hide trade with Iran to bypass sanctions. El Economista states that 85% of all car thefts happen with using GNSS jammers. Chinese fishermen use spoofing to fake their coordinates to hide the fact of illegal fishing in foreign territorial zones. And finally, in November 2020, the United States Maritime Administration issued a warning that confirms there are problems with navigation all over the world and they have already become a standard fact, a usual case that everyone has to be prepared for. Now let's move on to our insights. The point is that we are developing a system for spoofing detection and we have various pilot projects, test zones. What you can see on this picture here is what we got from Minsk. And as you can see, these points on the map, they stand for our devices that are installed and we are showing statistics upon spoofing detection for a monthly interval. Here, close to the top of the map, you can see a red spot which shows almost 13%. It means that for the whole month at this particular spot, 13% of the time was under spoofing. And below that, you can see the graph for this spot. And this chart shows how the spoofing was distributed in time. It's a monthly interval. There were long-term incidents that took sometimes 8 or even 10 hours. The point is that here on the top, near this red spot, that's where the residence of the president is located. And when he's physically there, they activate the electronic warfare system. Now, this is a picture from Moscow, dated by 25th of August. The red spot... The one you can see above, that's what is said on the Astankino Tower. It covers the whole city of Moscow very well. 
Sometimes we detect from 10 up to 20% under spoofing. If you look at the bottom of the chart, you will see the daily interval, and it's easy to notice that all events in Moscow as opposed to Minsk are rather short. They literally take a few minutes only. If you look into more details here, you can see a chart. In the upper part of it, you will see the probability of spoofing detection, and now it can be seen that only GPS was spoofed. The duration was approximately two and a half minutes, and at the bottom you can see fake satellites and that they have a huge pseudo-ranged residuals, which is considered to be an attempt of imitating the wrong coordinates. Why such a short spoofing? The point is that in Russia the anti-drone systems work according to the following principle. If we detect a drone in some sector, then we turn on the spoofing for a short period of time. Thus we can make sure there is no excessive impact on the civil infrastructure. But considering the fact that the time server can switch to a fake signal in 15 seconds, that is still a serious problem. Also, in Russia we run into rather long episodes of spoofing. Last year, when there were all sorts of political subtle aspects here, we had a spoofing incident in Sochi that lasted 30 hours. There were three episodes here on the chart, you can see the comments in red. So, we had 13 hours, 5 hours and 9 hours episodes. In total, for two days, the navigation was available only 50% of the time. All our colleagues who had time servers here, everyone has experienced a huge stress, as no one was ready for such a long-term scenario. What are the regulations? The thing is, as far as I understand, everything about cybersecurity depends very much on having any kind of regulation, standards or recognized methodology. The regulations exist only in the USA. At this moment, what we have is the following. A year and a half ago, President Trump signed an executive order strengthening national resilience through responsible use of positioning, navigation and timing services. He ordered to develop the so-called PNT profiles, which should help identify national infrastructure which depends on PNT and the navigation services. And in addition to that, there was an order to develop a methodology of the defense. In response to that, in December 2020, the Department of Homeland Security released a PNT conformance framework, which defines four levels of system resilience. The first level of the system is when it can be spoofed, but after a manual reset it should recover. The second level is when you have an alternative source, for example, GNSS and the atomic clock can be used for the timing. It is necessary to detect manipulations and disable the compromised source. And a limited accuracy degradation under spoofing will be okay. At the third level, accuracy degradation under spoofing should be restricted. And the fourth level should have no accuracy degradation under any kind of impact. Well, and the most famous regulation in this area, on February 2021, NIST released a PNT profile, which in fact is the basis for the development of all PNT profiles further on, but separately for each industry. It is assumed that based on this document during the following year, separate PNT profiles will be developed for the railway industry, for banking systems, even for agricultural section. This document, in fact, is of general specification, but at least it requires you to determine which service depends on navigation, it leads you to the usage of various sources of navigation and the necessity to detect distortion. This document won't show you how to actually do it, it'll just say that it's a requirement. We try to analyze and highlight everything that is related to GNSS and spoofing. First of all, you must check the vulnerability of your infrastructure and test how it will act within the real GNSS spoofing. 
That is, you need to use GNSS generators for simulating spoofing attacks to evaluate the reaction of the entire infrastructure. Secondly, you should be able to detect, to log and analyze all incidents. Thirdly, and it is a very important point for us, you are required to check the accuracy and quality of GNSS signals. Why is it that important? First of all, from one point of view, any kind of signal quality analysis in general does not refer to cybersecurity. And moreover, the satellite signals can be degraded due to a number of different reasons, for example, due to the solar activity or problems with ionosphere or a multipath effect. But since these requirements were already introduced, we just know how to do it, therefore it's quite important for us. Well, of course, you need to keep statistics and it's necessary to analyze the spectrum in the GNSS band, and most important is to be able to localize the source of the fake signals or interference. In fact, there is no regulation other than that. It is expected that the USA would develop new profiles for various industries within the next year, and within the two years period, it is expected that the state will carry out all tender purchases with standard requirements for resistance to PNT manipulation. I do hope that soon we will have the same or at least similar regulations in Russia, because we all see that in the field of radio electronic warfare, Russia can surely take the first place, as such number of problems Russia has in this area still cannot be found anywhere else except maybe only on the territory where Turkey borders with Syria. Well, that'll be all for now. Thank you very much for your attention.